Hi all. So welcome to this uh, first knowledge session on Snowflake uh, by K Snow, where uh, K Snow is our initiative between uh, Nordus and Snowflake. Uh, so I am uh, sorry. Uh, I'm Sarfraz, and I work as a senior software consultant at Nordus Incorporation. So uh, let's start, and before the starting, uh, let's go through the knowledge etiquettes. So uh, yeah, uh, so try to be punctual. Uh, means um, uh, try avoiding the session, joining the session after five minutes of threshold, and uh, give a constructive feedback. Uh, so this feedback like, actually uh, helps the presenter in growing, and. Uh, Keep your screens on mute until you have any queries to ask and avoid distraction. Uh, that is, uh, you know, uh, just breathe along the presenter and just enjoy the session. So um, since now we are all set, uh, let's look at the agenda. So this would be our agenda. Uh, uh, before moving into Snowflake, we will be looking into some prerequisite knowledge uh, that, will, that we require in this today's journey. And uh, then we will be uh, looking into Snowflake and its internal architecture, and uh, Snowflake, some famous uh, big data tools, uh, we will be comparing them. And uh, what is virtual warehouses and staging area? That is, uh, we will be looking into these concepts. Then uh, we will look into deeper dive of uh, you know, Snowflake architecture and how in real world we design uh, Snowflake uh, you know, for that uh, to work in a working project. Some uh, use cases, and finally ending up with a demo. Okay, so uh, yeah, let's start. So uh, before uh, moving ahead, I just want to clear up uh, what is the difference between a data warehouse and a data lake. Okay, so uh, let me take a take a uh, you know, example of real life uh, so you can understand better and never forget this difference. Uh, suppose um, let's take an uh, example of a uh, of a CTO of a you know, a product based company. So. Uh, what the thing the mindset of that person of the person uh, would be like you know he will be only uh, specialized into the technologies uh, which is which is being used in that product since it is a product based company uh, so he'll be more focused into all those uh, you know uh, technologies that uh, their tech stack is for uh, their project is following uh, that is like among a huge collection of technologies he will be filtering out a little bit uh, maybe a five or six technologies, and we'll be focusing on them. And on the other hand, let's take a uh, example of a uh, service-based company like Nordus, like our uh, CTO. Uh, I don't think he uh, can be, you know, uh, concise with some particular set of technologies and be focused on only those. Uh, he needs to uh, go for a wide range of technologies and you know uh, to explore them. So. Uh, Coming back, so you can think that data warehouse is something like a city of a so product based company where the data is in only some particular type, uh, and data lake is somewhere uh, where their data can be in any format, like it can be structured, unstructured, semi structured, uh, even videos and uh, images. So it can uh, you know, dump all the data in one place. So, data warehouse is basically for uh, structured data, and data lake is for every type of data. So a typical example of data warehouse are like Teradata, Exadata. Exadata is, I guess, uh, from Oracle. And uh, for data lake, we have like HDFS, uh, Amazon S3, and then Azure Blob Stories, and Google Cloud Stories. These are uh, you know, famous example of data lake. So uh, the rest of the talk will mostly, mostly focus on data warehousing, since Snowflake is, you know, is a cloud data warehouse. And we will be looking into data lake also, where it is uh, required. Um, so, let's look into the uh, need of data warehouse. The why data warehouse? Uh, let's me, let me take in again one example. Uh, let, let me consider uh, you know uh, a shop, shopping mall like a big bazaar kind of thing. So uh, they are globally all over India. So if uh, like uh, they are they are in Punjab, they are in Delhi, they are in Haryana, they are all over the uh, all over India. So now let's say uh, a manager, a senior manager wants to check that uh, what uh, what are the top most selling products uh, you know, uh, that uh, we should focus more, or maybe what are the least focus, least the selling products that uh, you know, we can give less uh, emphasis on. So uh, to do this, uh, one solution is that he will go to the you know, regional store of each 
uh, let's say in Delhi, he will go uh, to one store, he will collect the data. Next, again, he will jump to Noida, again, he will check the data. So, so it's not possible for a person to you know, move around the, uh, around the whole day and collect, and collect your data. So instead, uh, we go for data warehouse uh, kind of solution, where you know, this sub, as you can see, this, this smaller ones, you know, the, the, the regional stores, which are connected with a you know uh, and a, uh, is a larger is connected with a larger server kind of thing, where uh, we process a smaller uh, sets of data and push some kind of like aggregated results to the main uh, master storage. Okay, like uh, here maybe the data may uh, may be there for the entire day, and after that we aggregate the data for the entire day and send the aggregated results to this uh, data warehouse. So simple and simple and example would be this, just to clear. Okay. So <clears throat> next. So let's look into a, uh, a traditional data warehouse architecture and the definition along with it. So a data warehouse is a centralized place to store large amounts of historical data produced by the system or organization to find out meaningful insights after processing and analyzing the data. So uh, yeah, the main motive is that you dump your data at a you know, at a location, uh, so that uh, you can gain some meaningful insights after processing. As I said, that uh, maybe you need to find uh, the products which are most selling or the least selling ones. Okay. So uh, I, I'm not going to very depth of this architecture because uh, Snowflake has modernized this architecture. I'll just give an over, overview of this architecture, the how databases actually work. So uh, we have some. Uh, Operational database. That means you can say these uh, regional uh, stores database or some files. So these files uh, or this data data from the databases are put into a staging area. Staging area is something like it's a external area from your data warehouse where your data first gets loaded into, and from there you can you know do different types of transformation. Transformations means like uh, suppose uh, uh, there are rate. Uh, there's a entity in the suppose uh, rate and suppose uh, quantity and i want a column uh, like a total amount so i just can uh, i just uh, can do rate into uh, your amount so that i can get the oh sorry the rate and the uh, quantity so that i can get the amount so this is a kind of simple transformation and after that we finally load the data into the data warehouse so once the data is loaded into the data warehouse we create smaller subdivisions of this data warehouse known as data marts. So this data warehouse can consist uh, all type of data, like there can be uh, sales data, there can be purchases data, there can be staff data. So all data will be dumped in this uh, common place. Now from this uh, huge place, we will create data marts, like first data mart for sales, uh, second data marts for the purchases, next for the staff, the, and upon them, uh, we do. Uh, we have some servers uh, that is uh, relational uh, servers and the multi-dimensional servers where these are kind of you know uh, for use for analysis. Um, and finally, they serve the presentation layer uh, that may be your uh, graph or visualization tools or even a simple Excel sheet will do. So we will look into uh, depth, uh, but in terms of snowflake. Um, okay. So now let's move on to actually see what is snowflake. So as I have said, uh, like Snowflake is a modern day, uh, day data processing system that is intended to make the best use of elasticity of the cloud so that it can scale to infinity. Of course, like uh, Snowflake is a you know, cloud data warehouse. So it, uh, its intent is to make the best uh, you know, use of the cloud. And uh, does it means that uh, what cloud provides us is that uh, you know, the scalability. Uh, on demand. If you need more resources, you can scale up. And if you, uh, at any particular time, you need a, a lower number of resources, you can scale down. So this is the advantage of uh, cloud. So let's look into the features um, that, oh, oh yeah, by far we came to know that it is a cloud-based data warehouse, and it is a SaaS, a SaaS offering. Uh, so you don't need to take care of the hardwares and other uh, har any other updates or something. Any updates, uh, that has to be have, uh, that have taken place will be done by Snowflake uh, company itself, and uh, it is like paper use model. Uh, so like you only pay for what you store and what you process. Okay, 
and it uh, supports the NC SQL, uh, that traditional NC SQL. Uh, it supports NC SQL for processing. Uh, and if you want to connect any you know other databases or any other visualization tools like uh, Tableau or Power BI, so for that you have the ODBC and JDBC connectors. And uh, you know it is other uh, scalable, scalable that I have said already. Um, so we will be looking into this. What is ex exactly auto scalable means, and how does it work? So yeah, uh, uh, just to give a brief, like we have virtual warehouse. That is nothing but a group of nodes which can actually process your data. So this group of nodes can be scaled up or scaled down uh, at demand, and you get an unlimited storage of data. Um, that is true. Uh, S3, Azure Blob Storage, or Google Cloud. Uh, this decision needs to be taken at the time of creating your Snowflake account. So while creating the Snowflake account, uh, you are being asked to choose your cloud provider. And accordingly, you will get any of them. Uh, if you choose Amazon, you will be getting S3, and so on. So let's look into some advantages. So uh, advantage is that you can process a huge volume of data. You can easily process huge volumes of data. That is, of course, you have the SQL, and SQL is a very powerful, you know, language. Mm -hmm. um, next is provide ACID transaction, uh, as where ACID stands for atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability, uh, which you have probably uh, studied in your uh, DBMS. Okay, so uh, it guarantees ACID transactions, and uh, no data backups are required. Uh, like in typical databases, we need to do some uh, day back backups for our safe, safety purpose. Uh, here, your data is up and uh, you know very secured, and no need to worry about optimizations like in other processing tools, like in the case of Spark or uh, you know, other processing tools like Hive and all. Uh, we need to take care a lot of about optimization and about uh, and take, we need to take care about our resources. Here in Snowflake. Uh, 70 to 80 percent of the optimization is taken care by snowflake itself only 20 to 30 percent is given to the developer uh, very limited I, he means uh, he can only do some optimization like choosing the right cluster key or choosing the appropriate uh, virtual warehouse and uh, number of virtual warehouses uh, these things can be only choose by a developer more or less uh, no need to maintain indexes like in typical databases we need to you know maintain these indexes and no out of memory issues of course like uh, you get you get unlimited storage so there uh, the, the concept of un no mem out of memory issues doesn't comes in snowflake uh, next is sharing of data uh, like if you have worked in uh, databases you must have uh, come across this that sharing is a you know uh, is a little tedious process like you need to take the backup of the data and after that, uh, you, know, you need to transfer the backup to some other destination. And again, you need to you know, uh, uh, again uh, retrieve back from the backup. Uh, so in here, in Snowflake, it's very easy. It's just a matter of click. You need to just mention that destination Snowflake ID where you want to you know, share your data. And within two to three minutes, your data will be shared with the other customer. Uh, disadvantage uh, is only the cost uh, because uh, uh, because you know, uh, yeah, it's cloud-based model, and you know, you need to. Uh, it's paper use, so you need to be very careful about um, you know, about this cost factor. But yes, uh, with effective, good designing, uh, 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 this cost can be handled. Uh, so, let's go forward. Yeah. So next would be some uh, big data technologies. Uh, Snowflake versus some big data technologies. Okay. So. Uh, uh, if you have heard about Apache Hive, so like Hive is a data warehouse that is on top of HDFS. Okay, uh, so uh, this Hive uh, has a has performance challenges uh, because internally it uses MapReduce for processing, and we know that MapReduce is uh, slow for uh, no, processing huge amounts of data. At, at, it involves uh, multiple input and output operations. So. Uh, and uh, of course, the famous one, Apache Spark. You know, uh, we in all this have our core competencies in uh, Apache Spark. Uh, so, uh, if I compare Apache Spark's batch mode with uh, Snowflake, so uh, Spark SQL has limited support, you know, for advanced uh, SQL operation. Uh, like, if 
if I go for um, uh, very advanced kind of analysis or um, machine learning stuffs uh, for uh, based on SQLs, uh, Apache Spark uh, doesn't have the support. Uh, of course, I mean uh, it's growing day by day with Spark 3.0. Also, it has a, it uh, it gave us support for many things, but still uh, there is a lag. Uh, so and develop it is developers' responsibility in Spark uh, for do the optimizations like uh, what kind of join do you want or uh, no, uh, what uh, unwanted columns do you want to filter out. Uh, such type of things are taken care, care by the Spark uh, Catalyst optimizer, but uh, advanced stuff uh, like whether you're going to broadcast a variable or whether uh, which type of join you need to uh, you know, choose, uh, some type of things that, that uh, sometimes the developer used to take responsibility. Again, resource allocation is again developers, developers' responsibility. Like how many cores you want to allocate, how many uh, cluster, oh, what what should be the cluster size, how many executors you need to be uh, you need to allocate. These are all developers' responsibility. But in Snowflake, these are all handled by Snowflake, Snowflake itself. Uh, okay, so uh, this is a, a Snowflake architecture. Uh, as you can see, that the underlying uh, Cloud provider can be your Google, Amazon, or your Azure. <coughs> Sorry, and uh, after that you get a centralized storage. Uh, this centralized storage uh, can be S3 in case of Amazon, uh, Azure Blob storage in case of Azure, and Google Cloud Bucket in case of Google. And above this centralized uh, store, uh, you can create n number of virtual warehouses. That is a group of nodes to process the data from this centralized storage. So uh, you can create um, dedicated virtual house warehouses, like in as shown in this diagram. You can create a de dedicated warehouse for marketing, uh, marketing team, maybe a dedicated warehouse for data science team, uh, for the ETL development. So you can have your different um, uh, different uh, virtual warehouses. And above that, uh, there is a uh, cloud ser a services layer. Uh, which takes care of uh, the other things like optimization, okay, management of the metadata. Uh, so it keeps the track of the metadata of your data, of your tables, your transaction history, like which query failed, which query passed, this information, and uh, other other information also like the query is triggered by uh, from where, like it may be triggered from a BI tool, this kind of information. Security is also taken care. Uh, your data is secured and compressed in. Uh, and encrypted in your centralized storage. Uh, these things are also been taken care by uh, Snowflake itself. And uh, data sharing, uh, of course, as I said, that uh, this is very easy with uh, Snowflake to share the data. So uh, let's unfold this a bit and go a little deeper. Uh, so this, as I said, the storage layer can be uh, your uh, any of your flavor. Uh, upon this, yeah, this is your virtual warehouse. So uh, this virtual warehouse has four nodes, and uh, similarly, this virtual warehouse has only two nodes. Okay. Uh, so uh, as you can uh, estimate that uh, the amount of processing, the suppose I consider suppose x amount of uh, data. So the processing uh, time required by this will be little uh, higher than uh, this one because uh, as you can see, it has only two nodes and it has four nodes. Okay. So this is uh, in here comes uh, no, the thing that uh, you need to uh, how well you design your wa virtual warehouses. Uh, next, it has a, also a layer of cache. Uh, cache will you know, store your query result uh, uh, up till one day, so that uh, if any query, if the same query is been hit uh, within 24 hours, your uh, processing doesn't need to occur. Uh, it can directly serve from this um, cache layer. And above that, uh, as I have explained, uh, you get your cloud services layer, which takes care of all the things which I have explained in the uh, previous slide. Okay. Uh, let's move forward. Okay. Uh, any questions still here? Uh, because I'll be going like a little deep now. Anyone has any question? No. Okay. I hope so everyone. Can you go back to the previous slide? Uh, okay. Uh, this one. Yeah. So, okay. so I think uh, one interesting bit about this architecture is that uh, actually 
if you see right the data storage layer is different from your compute layer which is your virtual warehouses mm -hmm. so, you, yeah. so what what that gives you is basically you can scale both the storage as well as your computing power in, uh, independent of each other independent yeah right so, but, uh, so that's uh, one big advantage of using snowflake right because but uh, most, mm -hmm. yeah continue. because most of the time right your storage uh, or your storage rate uh, which is required is uh, is kind of fixed okay but uh, uh, for traditional data warehouses has that problem right that so so it was basically vertical scaling okay uh, in this you get the horizontal scaling right so if you have the same data storage okay but you want to uh, process your queries faster then you can actually in increase your compute power as uh, right. i've shown in this diagram right right but uh, the thing is that if you scale your data storage layer and if you don't scale your virtual warehouse layer then again you will be into you know uh, then you go won't get the benefit and okay. if you scale both of them yeah thanks okay so uh, now the data storage there uh, so when we create an snowflake account uh, we need to select our underlying uh, cloud provider as i already said uh, said so this cloud provider as you have by far already came to know that it can be aws azure or google so according to our choice uh, the data storage there is hosted on s3 azure block storage or cloud um, so um, it actually uh, dsl actually stores the actual data and provides unlimited space uh, and this data which you store in the um, dsl that is the data storage there is actually compressed into columnar format using aes 256 bit encryption Okay, so your data is uh, highly secured uh, and cannot be, you know, um, taken away by someone so easily. Uh, it is near to impossible. <clears throat> okay. Um, so next, uh, virtual warehouses. So virtual warehouse, as I wanted to say, is nothing but a cluster of nodes that processes your data. In case you choose AWS, uh, your these nodes will be easy to instances and accordingly for Azure and Google. Um, so the computation and processing is performed by a virtual warehouse uh, that may help you in uh, loading your data from an external uh, source into your uh, data warehouse or it also helps in querying or processing your data uh, so it can be automatically it is like it has a feature of auto suspend if not in use so uh, uh, it does not uh, store the data I, I know that I, if, if i read out this point now it says that this virtual warehouse does not store your data Okay, and can be suspended when not in use. So if it's at the idle time, is I guess it was like ten minutes. Uh, uh, if your virtual warehouse is idle for ten minutes and if it's not processing anything, it will be automatically suspended down. So to so save your uh, money. Uh, and it doesn't store the actual data, but it stores the query result uh, after uh, twenty-four hours. So suspended warehouses can be automatically resumed upon hitting any query. Uh, then it will automatically be resumed. So uh, size of uh, this virtual warehouse can be scaled up or down. Um, so uh, like if I give an example, like today I have uh, a virtual warehouse of let's say four node. And at a particular point of time, uh, there is a huge load of my data. Okay. Uh, and these four nodes are not able to process the data uh, efficiently. So I can increase these four nodes to let's say eight nodes or 10 nodes and uh, after that the peak hour is done i can again bring that back to the again back to four nodes but this is a manual process you need to do it yourself uh, one more uh, thing is that you get an elastic virtual warehouse or you can say multi-cluster virtual warehouse in where the scaling is uh, automatic uh, that is uh, snowflake takes care of scaling your uh, virtual warehouse so it can replicate the exact virtual warehouse into multiple copies. Suppose I have a virtual warehouse of four nodes, so it can replicate two or three virtual warehouses of the same configuration. Okay. Uh, but the important question is that uh, when does Snowflake actually scale up or scale down? Okay. Uh, in case of automatic process. So uh, uh, I'll be showing you to how to you can create you know uh, these virtual warehouses. So while creating these virtual warehouses, you are given given two policies one is standard policy and the eco and one is the economy policy so uh, the question here is 
how many queries does Snowflake use before it spins up additional cluster. So uh, for this, if I go with the standard uh, uh, version, then uh, it will spin up additional cluster immediately. That is immediately when a query is queued up. And that is the system detects that there is one more query that the currently running cluster can execute. So as soon as it figured out that thing, so it will spin up one more additional cluster. Next thing is the economy. In this economy, uh, the system estimates that whether there is enough query uh, query load to keep the new cluster uh, that it, will, it is going to spin up uh, can be busy for at least six minutes. If yes, then it will spin up. If no, then it will be queuing up those uh, you know, uh, queries uh, for, to, for, to be processed by the same uh, virtual warehouse. So, and uh, we have virtual warehouses actually of you know, t-shirt sizes. Like if you get X small, small, medium, large. So in X small, uh, number of nodes is one. In small, you get two nodes. In medium, you get four nodes and so on and so forth. So let's look into a quick, quick demo of uh, Virtual Warehouse, how we can create it. So, OK, so here I'm at my Snowflake. It's a beautiful interface. Uh, so let's go into this Warehouses tab, if I am not in top and not in. OK, so I want to create one. So here I can give a name like um, okay. So here comes the size which you want to choose. Okay. So here is the thing. So uh, and the prices are there accordingly. For like say if I take a small warehouse uh, which consists of two nodes, so it will be one node, uh, one credit per node for an hour. Okay. So uh, you need to do some kind of, uh, you need to pay Snowflake in advance so that you get some credits out of it. Uh, and uh, accordingly, these credits get utilized. Okay, uh, we will be looking into how much this credit actually cost us. We will be looking at in the later slides. So yeah, uh, after you select this size, next is the thing where you, uh, I was talking about the multi-cluster thing. Uh, so if I choose four, uh i guess oh uh, yeah four and a minimum is one that means my my virtual warehouse will be working with one well uh, uh, instance only of consisting of two nodes but where there is a heavy workload then it can spin up to four so four and with each for uh, one you get two nodes so four into two you get eight nodes in total so again the policy which you need to uh, one uh, which I've explained, there is standard or economy and auto suspend mode. Uh, by default, it is 10 minutes, as I said, but you can increase it up to you know, never. Okay. Uh, in that kind, this thing you need to be you be you need to be a rich rich kind of person. Uh, but you need to select an idle time because uh, once uh, you know, your machine is suspended, uh, your cache gets erased off. So if you want to take the advantage of cache so that your result gets uh, served from the query, uh, cache layer itself instead of doing a computation again, uh, then in that case, you need to think about uh, this uh, suspend time. But the uh, good thing is that suppose at 4 o'clock, I have served the query. Uh, it will be, uh, it, will, it, it, it will exist in the, you know, the cache state till the next day, 4 p.m. But before, for, you know, before uh, next day, 4 p.m., if I hit the query again, then again I will be getting uh, additional 24 hours without incurring the cost. So it's always a good practice to know. Uh, if you, even, even if you don't want, just hit the query. So you, you, want get, you, you get one day more extra, and you keep on adding one day extra uh, to your bandwidth without incurring the cost. And uh, the comment, if you want to give, uh, any comment for your data warehouse, and this is the corresponding Snow SQL, uh, Snow SQL command if you want. Uh, it is showing you what kind of data warehouse size you want, and uh, what's the type, suspend mode, suspend time, etc. So I'm just closing it and clicking on finish, and within a few seconds this should be up and running. Yeah, it's done.
okay so that's how simple it is to create you know a virtual warehouse with n number of nodes going back to the slides so yay we have seen it okay so life without snowflake as i have said uh, you know from the previous uh, first uh, architecture we have different data marts and different people are working on those independent uh, on those data marts the sales team has their own data mart the engineering team has their own data mart and this guy is is in huge trouble because maybe he's expecting some data from off customer but this customer data is uh, is maybe uh, is not ready or uh, it's not been shared with him or uh, there will be various reasons so uh, you know this kind of things may occur or maybe this went down somehow so in that case it will be a huge trouble you know, to compute the things so snowflake made it kind of simple and easy by you know giving a centralized storage like this okay this is a centralized storage each team will have their own virtual warehouses from there they can you know query their uh, whatever desired thing from the centralized storage uh, independent of others so now they are very much in the uh, uh, yeah now they are very much independent and they are working happily okay so i guess we have seen this already but uh, what does it cost for an x small it uh, it causes one uh, one node one credit for for an hour okay now let's look into pricing how much they actually charge you for a credit and what are the flavors of uh, what are different flavors of data warehousing you get so yeah so choose your desired infrastructure i go with amazon and the reason where most of your you know, resources are already there so that data not no and doesn't needs to be shuffled a uh, move here and there um suppose i assuming uh, we have our data at us east ohio i will select my region and here you get your it is yeah here it is. so you get a uh, four to five i guess yeah five total five flavors of snowflake one is a standard enterprise business critical vps and on demand storage capacity okay so uh, these are all other features available uh, made in the standard version like you get premium support from snowflake like all the uh, 365 or uh, 24 hours time travel of one day means you can go to any previous data which you have accidentally deleted or updated uh, these all features are there uh, in enterprise all the features of standard plus additional these things So in this, you get multi-cluster warehouse. Actually, uh, this doesn't support multi-cluster, uh, and time travel is up to 90 days here. So any data you have deleted, you can go back and get the data days, within the 90 days time uh, time window. And uh, other things are also there. Uh, there are many things uh, uh, which Snowflake provides. So uh, for each the Cost is this for one. If you want one credit for this, you need to pay two dollars. Okay, so for two dollars, you'll be given one credit, and this one credit can be used by one, uh, one node for an hour, as we have seen. So this was from the the pricing part. Let's go forward. So uh, let's now look into you know, how these things actually works. So uh, let's say you have some uh, data coming, uh, data coming in from different sources, and this data actually gets dumped into a data lake, which can be your uh, S3 uh, blob, Azure blob, uh, and from there we extract, transform, and load the data into data warehouse. The same concept that we saw in the first architecture, traditional data warehouse thing. and from this data warehouse we can you know attach our bi reporting tools or uh, even the processing tools like the spark etc uh, can be connected from this data warehouse so uh, your unstructured data is getting dumped over here it can be in various forms from that we do some etl to get it structured as data warehouse supports on the structured data uh, i am a big fan of databricks so it's even here also okay fine ah uh, Mm. so uh now going into a deep uh, interactive uh so these can be external sources 
and uh, this is our staging area uh, which can be s3 or blog or whatever and from this uh, we do some epl or elt kind of thing uh, and this thing is uh, handled by your virtual warehouse and after transforming the data the data is loaded into the sto uh, shared story or oh, yeah shared uh, centralized story okay and in case of streaming data uh, if you if your data is uh, you know the getting dumped over this uh, s3 uh, periodically like even in like one hour or something then uh, snowflake has its own um, Mm, you can say a component known as Snow Pipe, which is used to process the streaming data and move the data into the centralized storage. And once the data is here, you can have your independent uh, virtual warehouses and can process the data. This is for data science team, this is for data engineering team, this is for marketing team, so on and so forth. Okay. All right. Uh, so, any doubt till here? Any questions? Do you have anyone? We are going good on time. So. No? No. Yes. <laughs> okay, and that's now let's look into this thing. What is in staging area? So the staging area is like a it's a temporary storage where we first put everything and then we we'll, uh, you know, gradually uh, keep keep shifting them to a more stable location after doing some transformation on uh, other things. <clears throat> Of cleaning the data. Um, in this example, uh, if I consider a warehouse, like uh, you know, a warehouse where goods are stored, so a truck is there. It has loaded the data into the staging area. From this staging area, this guy uh, will you know uh, take the goods into the respective uh, places. So this can be your uh, you know the source from where your data is coming. This can be your S3. And this guy is your virtual warehouse, which is actually processing the data and uh, giving it somewhere. Okay. So, okay, let's look into the what the definition says. So, staging area external is an external storage uh, from where the data is loaded into Snowflake data storage layer. External storage can be S3, Azure Blob, and Google Cloud Storage. But do not confuse this. Staging area can also be S3 blob storage and cloud, but this is the external one. And your internal Snowflake storage area can also be the same things. So do not get confused. So it is treated as a data lake where the data first lands into. Uh, from staging area, we will load the data for, into Snowflake databases after performing transformations if required or cleaning. Uh, so these things we will be looking into the demo uh, step by step. So now to load batch data. Uh, like uh, every hour, uh, like every day, if you want to load some data, so in for that we have the Snowflake copy command. That is uh, that can be that that can be used. You know, uh, copy bulk data from um, staging area into Snowflake databases, and uh, we can also use other tools like Informatica, Talent, Metalion. And for uh, to, uh, to load continuous data, uh, we have Snow Snowflake's inbuilt component that is SnowPipe. Uh, we can also use Kafka, uh, Kinesis for this purpose. Next, uh, um, so in a you know, very simple way, this can be uh, Snowflake uh, uh, architecture. How it is, how it actually serves in production. So uh, we have the various sources from sources the data comes into the staging area. From staging area, the data is loaded into the production DB. This is a centralized storage, and uh, in the centralized storage, and from where we can clone a table. Uh, we can clone the entire database. Okay. I'll be telling you the reason. Uh, and from where we can create dashboard, we can create different views. Uh, views because you know uh, maybe my table has 10 columns and I don't want to expose a few columns to the end user. In that case, I will obviously go with uh, some strategy of creating views so that I can secure my data. Mm, and after that, these will be served into your visualization uh, reporting tools. Now, uh, Creating a clone DB of the product, actual DB, is a good practice actually, because you know uh, we can uh, multiple uh, you know, user can hit the concurrent uh, queries at the same time. Uh, if these queries are supposed to hit on the production DB, then there will be a concept of you know it will be uh, freezing all your uh, S3 buckets, uh, and uh, there may be a problem that uh, you are not able to serve the data or the data is not able to get loaded into. 
So this type of things may occur in case of concurrent write queries, at least for not for reads. So it's better to you know create a clone DB of it, and cloning is just a matter of just one SQL line to clone a database. Oh uh, yeah, to clone a database. And this production DB is independent. So now it is independent to load data. The loading is independent. It's keeping the loading is independent. Um, now let's look into the like real life use case. <laughs> Uh, so this can actually we are you know trying to build uh, this as part of our case no initiative. Um, so uh, there are some sources which are like continuously pushing your data uh, and Kafka is uh, you know consuming those data. From this Kafka, uh, the, the Kafka Spark streaming or Spark structure streaming is consuming your data from Kafka and doing its processing. So the so one way it can it can be that as soon as it processes data, uh, it will load the data into Snowflake. Okay. And the other way maybe processes the data and dumps into S3. And from S3, may maybe say after a day or something, we again load this bulk data into uh, Snowflake. There can be two approaches. Okay. And for, once the data is into Snowflake, uh, we can use BI tool to actually query the data and do the processing uh, in Snowflake and retrieve back the result to Snowflake uh, to Power BI. Okay. Uh, so. Yeah, let's go ahead and let's go with a demo of uh, bulk loading first. And we will see if time permits, uh, I will show a continuous loading also. Okay. Um, so let me go to the worksheet. Okay. So these are simple plain SQL queries like I wanted to uh, let me first load. This. Okay, I will create a DB first. So the query is running. Okay, my DB is created. Let me refresh, and my DB is here. Okay, and suppose okay, I do one thing. Okay. Okay, it's already uh, because you know uh, I have already uh, run this query previously, so it is already here. Actually, it is uh, it uh, initially it is blank. Once you use this use DB, then your automatically database comes over here. But initially it is blank. Uh, so I do uh, use database. Then I create a table. So that uh, before this, I want to show you my data. Uh, so this data is actually. Uh, this, which has like uh, five columns, transaction date, customer ID, or four columns, so transaction date, customer ID, transaction ID, and amount. Okay. So I'll be creating a simple uh, table for it. Here it is, and I'll be running this thing. Okay, so if I do a refresh, and I explore this, inside public schema, I should get my sales table. All right, the sales is here. Fine. <clears throat> and uh, oh yeah, uh, with every database you get two schemas. One is public, and one is information schema. This information schema actually stores the metadata information and other stuff that you required uh, with day-to-day uh, -day activities. But uh, as of now, I'm not uh, going to the depth of this. Okay. Um, so uh, now I will be creating a schema for external stages. Uh, that is, in my case, it will be S3, okay? and I'll be creating a file format to just uh, to denote that I have a CSV file. Um, this file can be Parkway also anything. So just to I, uh, say, uh, just to identify the file format unit, uh, I am creating a schema for that, so that all my file formats can be stored into a you know, particular location. Uh, actually, these are best practices I am showing you. Um, Ten. I need to create an integration object. This integration object will you know, connect your Snowflake and the S3 bucket uh, in a secured way. Okay. So uh, this is uh, this is the query you need to run uh, that I want to create an integration object and the object name. So type is external stage. Yeah, my type is external stage and provider is S3 and enabled. Whether I want to enable it right now or I want to enable it later on. So it will do it false, and then you need to alter this integration object and make it true. And this is my storage uh, database role 
uh, which AWS is providing me for this bucket, okay, and my location, uh, where it is located. If I show you, I mean, stream. Um, okay. So, yeah, snowflake private, then there's something central, then load data. Okay. So here is my data, transaction one to CSV. So for the same, so this is the location I have given. Now I'm not going to create it again as already I created one. Uh, so if I do a description, describe of this. Maybe. Yeah. Already there is. Yeah, these things are already there. Okay. As you can see, uh, this integrations object is already very much established. Uh, with uh, now, I can take care of my Snowflake and S3 team. Now, uh, next thing would be. Oops. Next thing would be to actually define this file format. So I will mention that uh, that I want to create a file format in my uh, this schema, which I the schema I created for to store the file format. DB name dot schema name and my file format name, and I want to say that the type is CSV and the delimiter of my CSV file is actually yeah, it's actually a pipe. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah, uh, and uh, I want to skip the header part, uh, okay? And uh, in case of any null, uh, if I want to just, uh, no, uh, I'm considering null to be null or in case in, in small letters also. And in, if any field is uh, like empty, then I will set it to null, uh, which is equal to, which I'm setting is equal to true. So let me create this file from here. So in case of car park weight, you need to define it as park weight and uh, according to its its property. Next, I want to define my uh, external storage. So my I will create my external storage, my S3 external storage under external stages schema. And the uh, storage integration object is S3, which I have created, uh, created. And a URL is this. So let me create this. OK, so it's created. Now. Uh, I want to copy, uh, as I said, uh, copy batch data. We have a copy command. So this is a copy command, which will copy into the, your sales table from this external storage, which, which is this, okay, which is this one, uh, from this. And the file format, file format name is just a file format CSV, which I have already defined. This is the file format CSV. Yes, this is the file, file my underscore CSV underscore format. And on error, uh, if there are multiple files, if there are like ten files in uh, in the in, in your S3, and suppose let's say in one file you have some corrupted data which cannot be parsed into you know say uh, that data type which you have mentioned in your table, uh, in case of that that file will be skipped. Okay, so on error skip the file, only that particular file, which have problem. So I want to load the data. So uh, now let's look before and that I want to have a look at my data warehouse which data warehouse i am using so you can choose your data warehouse which you want to use i have two data warehouse let me choose this one and it's in suspended mode okay uh, i started it but it was uh, 10 minutes already passed by so it has uh, come to suspended mode okay now if i do some processing using this uh, data warehouse you can see that it, it will start oh i guess i have not mm. Let me run the entire code because I, I guess I have missed any code. Okay, 
Uh, Sakura, I guess the name of the external stage is different when you're creating it and when you're using it. You're creating my S3 HD stage. Oh, oh, that's nice, nice. Okay, thanks, thanks, thanks. Yeah. Okay, I get it in work next time. Ah, there's a problem. Uh, since I have recreated this integration object, so it has given me a different, you know, configuration. Uh, so let me just quickly check how much time is there. Oh, okay, we have 10 minutes, it's okay. Um, let me go to IAM. I guess this thing has changed. So no, no, we should have this completed. Hopefully this is the only the issue. Let's go back to watch it. Go down. Okay. So now let's create the external staging area. And it's done, I guess. Got an area. Okay, it's successful. Now let's stop the fingers crossed. Ground scrolling. Ta-da! It's loaded. We made it. So, uh, as you can see, this came into green step, means it is now active because you have uh, processed some data. And now, if I, uh, you know, I suspend it. Um, uh, oh, I need to go back here. And I suspend my data. Yes. I suspend also this. Good. Now, let's execute this code. As you can see, it has again gone to uh, suspended mode. The green button is off now. It's no more online. You can see. So, I have uh, hit this query. It gave me that there are 100 records, but you can see that it has not come into active state. This is because, as I have said, you have a layer uh, that is in the cloud services layer, that is your metadata layer. So this metadata layer has the information that this table has this much of records, what is the schema type, and uh, and many other information. So uh, Snowflake was able to uh, you know, serve you just from the uh, services layer. It didn't have to go down to the storage layer. OK? So now this thing is again. Now it will come up. Now it needs to go to the to read the extra data. If I hit this, now it will come in green state, as you can see. And I got my 20 records. Okay. So, yeah, this was the uh, pretty much a demo from, uh, for load data into Snowflake from uh, S3. Uh, and uh, uh, I guess we have only five minutes. Um, I won't be able to show the practical of uh, no, uh, continuous data, but I have a ready-made block for you. Uh, if I can explain just from the diagram, I will be. I can do that. So your data is continuously loaded into S3. From that, you have some uh, no, SQS event which you need to configure, and you need to create a pipe object, snow pipe object. 
So these two things will be configured. That is, whenever a file comes into S3, this uh, SQS queue will trigger a query or uh, trigger uh, an event and say that, hey, Snowpipe, I have a file. Just go and read it. Okay. And accordingly, Snowpipe uh, Snow will read it and put the uh, put the data into the table. Okay. So uh, yeah, we can do it with some REST based endpoints also. So the only thing that is changed is that till here it is same. You are you know, I'm just testing my copy command. Till here it is the exact same. Only thing is that you need to create a snow pipe. You need to create a snow pipe and say auto ingest equals a true and uh, you know you copy from this location from this section of storage, the format format is this format again on error. Continue. This time I don't want to fail. If it is error, then continue. Don't worry. And uh, uh, and and then after that I'm just counting the records. Okay. So after, uh, for that you need to configure this uh, you know, bucket S3 bucket with SQS. Uh, so you need to say that for all event I want to create an event. So send it send the trigger or event trigger to SQS and just mention your snowflake uh, snow pipes ARN over here and your both things can talk to each other. Yeah, that's the thing. And sorry I just uh, mistakenly said I guess nothing wrong. If there's any issue in any of the file, if you say continue, it will just eliminate, uh, ignore that file and continue. In case of if you say uh, on error, if you say uh, yeah, what on error, skip file, then it will just skip the file. Okay, so these things are pretty much same. Okay, uh, okay. so yeah, that was all from my side. Uh, anyone has any questions? Yeah, there are a couple of questions. Virtual warehouse is fixed, but it can create multiple. Oh, no, and these yeah. are from when you told us about the uh, separate uh, layers, right? Uh, the storage layer and the compute layers. These are okay. from that. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah, okay. so this was my, from my side. Any questions? Just on time. Have you ever said something? No, no. Or share something? Thanks. Thanks, sir. Okay. No, actually, uh, yeah, Snowflake is actually getting a lot of traction in the industry, right? And uh, there are already people, yeah. most of the enterprises are looking to move to Snowflake. Okay, so right. And even, technology have, yeah. yeah, in the US, it is the fastest grooming technology these days. Yes. Yeah. All uh, right. So, so I just want to say something. So, so we see that, uh, yeah, now we can see that these uh, technologies are emerging. But, uh, but since uh, since like many years, okay, uh, actually, at least I am aware of my bad, okay, in in my in my that book, uh, which, uh, which depicted all about data warehouses. So we have all we have all have all these techniques, okay, where where we can save data in different datas, just like we have. So basically, there was a subject in which I read about the snowflake schema. So now, now you can see that yeah, history repeats itself. Just like we had a system derived uh, many years before, okay, and now uh, later on it has been implemented when we have like powers and machines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for sharing. Okay. Then uh, thank you, guys. Thanks for being patient and listening to the session. Yeah, thank you for your time. Thank you. Yeah, Do give constructive feedback. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Thanks.